Step into the world of the apocalypse, a city bombed beyond recognition, houses blown up, people lost. For Mohammed Hafez, architect and designer of skyscrapers, this is his reality. It's the reality that as a sculptor, Muhammad creates in miniature scale the bomb cities of this ancient land to share with the viewer the horrors of war. His ancestral home in Damascus stands in ruins, his relatives scattered in sanctuaries, trying to build new lives from the complete destruction of this ancient place. Cities have turned into complete decimation. Um, that's a real drone footage from a northern town. Um, as an architect, I know how long buildings take to build and how long it takes to rebuild. So when somebody tells me, well, we're gonna rebuild it in a few years, I know that's not gonna happen. This is the Umayyad Mosque in Aleppo. That minaret is 1,100 years old. Today, it stands like this. That's the minaret there. Notice it? Pretty nice. That's it. Historic buildings like this stand like that today. Aleppo's marketplace, the souk, is a world UNESCO heritage site. It stands like that today. These are the moments that I'm plugged into every morning, every afternoon, every night. citizen of this world. Yes, I, my blood is Syrian, but I'm also I'm a proud Syrian American. My, my wife speaks French, English, Arabic. My mom speaks German, Arabic, English. We're normal Joes. We're not any different. So what I'm about to show you today is a normal Syrian family. Normal, middle class, nothing special. My mom, my nephews, my nieces, my sisters. Like anybody, we had dogs, believe it or not. Some of us went to the Caribbean. Some of us, while leaving their kids in Disney World. In Saudi Arabia, we met people from every which country you could imagine. Every faith, every religion, every background. And we became very strong friends. Uh, my father decided to build this house and retire in it. Um, this garden noticed many, many parties over the years, dinner parties. My family, um, we're like your big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> Only the Syrian version. So this is not a Thanksgiving dinner. This is this is our salon, where a lot of these dinners ended with endless nights of chatter, talk, everybody's in everybody's business. What do you mean you don't eat meat? Don't worry, I make lamb. <laughs> that sort of thing. Well, unfortunately today, that room sits like this, or like that. Um, and in the scheme of things, the architect in me sort of fusses about the paint peeling and the things like that. But in the scheme of things, we have been extremely blessed and fortunate to have all siblings alive. Yes, we do have 
the rest of the family is still in Damascus. But in the scheme of things, we have been tremendously blessed. And perhaps it puts more pressure on me um, to be telling my story. This entire thing started as a nostalgic work in college 14 years ago, well before the war. I got stuck here eight years. Oh, guess what? The travel ban existed back then. We just didn't know about it. And post 9-11, if you are a citizen of 26 countries, you were issued a single entry visa only. And every time you thought about going home, you'd have to reapply again, which takes a year and a half. So, I stayed here, and I got stuck eight years, grew very homesick, that I loved. I started with gas blaster uh, as a medium, and then I made my way to found objects. So in this particular gallery, you see sort of a nar narrative, where we start there in the video, which I highly recommend to see on the screen, it shows you the urban fabric of Damascus, and you should make your way into seeing the more nostalgic work, and then it reflects the more status quo today, ending by the plight of refugees. The normal people that I showed you earlier showed up in my work. I wanted to capture that moment of peace, the street beggar, that moment of love and laughter. I didn't realize that years later, that might have been a moment of peace that is no longer existent. From nostalgic to where the cities of Syria started getting a new aesthetic, a new aesthetic full of destruction, chaos. You can't decipher, is that part of the original facade of the building? Is that part of a shrapnel? Then you have the refugee tents. So as an architect, I became very interested in the new aesthetic our cities have taken and the chaos, right? It's painful enough to be Syrian and to witness that. It's more painful to be an architect, an artist, and interested in archeology. span How do you Think, how do you feel when you see 11 year, 1100 years old minaret bombed out of existence? Poof. Presentation of real places in Damascus or is it made out of memory? Um, their memory. They are artist interpretations. These are not real places, but they're driven from real places. If you come to my studio, I have photos and photos and photos from my wall. My ceilings are 14 feet, so kind of like that. And I have from the floor to the ceiling photos of the devastation in Syria and the sufferings. So I'm plugged on to day life every day. And I just go in and start making. Um, a lot of times it comes, it starts from a found object. That piece, why have you forsaken us? It started with a sculpture of Mother Mary and her facial expression. Well, I invite you to see from this angle and look at her face. That moved me. And I said, boy, the dark, the scene, the image is so dark out of home. We need a prophet to show up and pray for us. And that's what you see. A lot of people don't realize that Mother Mary and Jesus are a big figure uh, in the Islamic theology. You can't call yourself a Muslim unless you believe in them. Yeah. So it started with that object, and I designed everything along her. A lot of times, my work comes from an embodied emotion. I feel if the technology reached a level where we were able to 3D print our emotions, these would be coming out of me right now. So it's like a, a sneeze in a way. You know, I pressured, I sneeze these things, and it is what it is. Um, 
I can't say I take high pride in them. I don't take any pride, in any, I don't feel any ownership in them. I take pride in standing here in front of you and being a messenger. Um, these can go anywhere from a couple months to six, seven, eight months. Uh, I work on several pieces at a time. I never work on one. In my studio, I have anywhere from four pieces up to seven pieces that I'm working on. Uh, the process is fairly interesting. I don't design these. I don't think about them. I just grab my materials, found objects, and just go at it. Um, I make the architecture from scratch, the walls, the floors, I carve that, that's made. Everything else you see in, in these sculptures are found objects. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a conversation with these found objects of what they want to be in my sculpture. Some of them come out of blenders, come out of radios, radio bulbs, miniature dollhouses, um, gloves, anything you will start seeing some of that. But at the right scale, uh, it takes a different meaning. So part of the time is finding the right object and just including it in the work. I work on several pieces at a time. I never work on one. In my studio, I have anywhere from four pieces up to seven pieces that I'm working on. Um, the process is fairly interesting. I don't design these, I don't think about them. I just grab my materials, found objects, and just go at it. Um, I make the architecture from scratch, the walls, the floors, I carve that, that's made. Everything else you see in, in these sculptures are found objects. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a conversation with these found objects of what they want to be in my sculpture. Some of them come out of blenders, come out of radios, radio bulbs, miniature dollhouses, um, gloves, anything. You will start seeing some of that. But at the right scale, uh, it takes a different meaning. So part of the time is finding the right object and just including it in the work. I wasn't done with His Royal Highness one. <clears throat> I wanted to criticize more. So I made His Royal Highness two. And His Royal Highness two sits up in his palace up here with all his army and tanks pointing at us. And the rest of the country is uprooted into abyss. This didn't feel enough. I felt that, ugh, that kind of applies to not only Syrian or Middle Eastern dictators, I don't know. Perhaps it's more of a global piece. Perhaps there are many more people that feel they could sit up in their palace, ex blessing their people daily with their spicy statements. When Mohammed is asked about the Russian drone footage of his city being bombed and destroyed, he answers... ...to fly his drone and document this. And ever since I posted it, I get every day, every week, an email saying, Mr. Hafez, we really like your email, your, your drone footage. Can we use it in our publication? And I said, guess what? I don't own it. You don't need to ask permission. The Russians did not ask my permissions to bomb my country. <laughs> Use it! <laughs> so, that's the story of it. Oh, the culture, the heritage that we left behind, that sort of lifestyle, uh, you can't recreate in, in uh, living abroad. Uh, so that's what we miss, and that's the nostalgia. But there's a flip side to that coin. Like I said, this is home for me, right? Um, half of me is there, half of me is, is... So 
I am just equally as invested in, 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 in building and in rebuilding a future uh, here and moving on and uh, building a future and a, and a safe haven for my family and my kids uh, because, like I said, I'm a citizen of the world. I grew up in many, many areas. Yes, my home country is devastated now. It doesn't stop me from um, moving on where we need to talk about these issues, where we need to come together as a nation and to heal this big division inside us, to fight painting people with white brushes and say, guess what, I met a Muslim the other day and he has a story. One of my interesting comments that I usually get. Well, Mohammed, you're one of them good Muslims. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not, we're not rare. <laughs> we are 1.5 billion Muslims. If I have reached out to you, if this has made any meaning, please do spread the word around. This whole show came together by the blessing of a beautiful, very warm-hearted lady, Susan. Which, can I say background is Please. Jewish, collaborated with Muslim. As her, her husband is Catholic. Does it matter today in today's society? Yes and no. It's important. This is a celebration of the real America that I have signed up for. This is the real nation. And I'm not gonna sit still, silent. I'm not gonna hide like a minority. If you liked my message, spread it. If you appreciate the work, support it. If you have a friend that's afraid of us, worried about us, Introduce them to me, introduce them to my family. Our doors are open, our hearts are open. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it.